Hey everybody and welcome to Mariachi Inglés. Today we're going to give a brief introduction into guitarrón in four easy steps. In this video we're going to learn how to hold a guitarrón, how to pluck the strings, the name of the strings, and four basic fretboard positions. So if you're ready, get your guitarrón in your hands and let's begin. So first things first, how do we even hold this thing? The thing that I always like to emphasize when teaching a new student how to hold a guitarrón are comfort and ease of play. That means that you shouldn't be hurting, obviously, none, the, the way that you hold the instrument shouldn't hurt you at all because you might be playing for a long time. It shouldn't uh, hurt your hands or your arm or your body in any way. And also ease of play. Your hands should have easy access to the strings and to the fretboard. So the way that I like to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and stand up here an important thing to remember. If you're using your guitar strap, or in this case your guitar strap, it should be in the middle of the body. It should line up kind of in the middle of the instrument here. Not like this, and not like this, right in the middle. The reason for this, it gives you a good angle on the instrument, a little bit out and a little bit up, so that when your arm extends, it's flat over the instrument. That's a good playing position because it gives you a nice flat area to rest your arm on and a perfect position for you to reach the strings right over the sound hole. This is the correct playing position for your right hand. Now, some things that I see beginners do uh, that are, I guess, incorrect uh, is this. They want to hold the, in the instrument facing them so that they can see what they're doing. But this is no good because the sound now is going straight up instead of out towards the people that you want to hear you. So this is no good. Another thing they see, see them do is the exact opposite of that, where they want to hold it like a guitar and it's like parallel to their body. Uh, this is no good either because it gives you a really harsh angle over which your arm has to reach the strings. That edge right there is going to dig into your arm after a little while, it's going to hurt, and it doesn't give you a good access to the strings. So this is no good either. So like I said, an indicator for a proper playing position is your strap position. You want it to be right in the middle of the guitarron so that you have a good angle and your arm should be flat over the top of the instrument like that. Rest it on this big curve and that gives you a good position to reach the strings right over the sound hole. Now as far as your left hand, your fretting hand, we have to discuss what's called the pitch of the instrument. So. Some people want to hold it like this, hold it to get that arm like a guitar, that's not right. Uh, the reason for that, your left arm is totally extended here. The instrument is pretty big, you know, you have to reach a long way to get out to the fretboard. This is going to get really tiring, that's no good. So if you just tilt the instrument up a little bit, the neck and the fretboard are much closer to your body, and it gives you this position, a nice crook in your elbow so that you can easily reach the fretboard. So that's the proper playing position to hold the guitarrón. At an angle, out in front of you, strap in the middle of the instrument. Should be easy and comfortable to rest your arm on the top of it. Should go over flat, reach the strings. Add a nice pitch so that you can get a good crook in your elbow. And here's the comfortable and correct playing position for playing the guitarrón. Okay, for step two, we need to know how to make a sound on a guitarrón, and we do that by plucking the strings. But unlike a guitar or an electric bass, we don't use a pick, we use our fingers. And with a guitarrón, we're plucking two notes at the same time. Every single note on a guitarrón is doubled, so A with A, B with B, C with C, and so on and so forth. We'll explain that later on online. But the first thing to know is that there's a technique for doing this that is appropriate for guitarrón. And it's basically <laughs> what I like to call like the lobster claw. So you use your thumb and your middle finger and your index finger. So you pluck the strings together like that. But um, there's a little trick to it and I'll show you now. So let's start off by doing an A note. So to do an A note, we pluck the sixth string and the first string at the same time. That's an A. Now you might notice that I'm doing something here. I'm kind of twisting my hand. See this twisting motion where I'm going like that? It's kind of like tightening a bottle cap. 
So you want to do this spinning thing with your hand where you're twisting to the right. Something that we want to avoid, and I see a lot of beginners do, is this, where you're kind of going straight up and down. The problem with this is you can't get a whole lot of power behind it. You don't get a, a nice solid uh, pluck like that. Doing it sideways like this, and doing the twisting motion, allows you to get a nice solid pluck. So your bottom fingers, well let's, let's look at it this way. For the first three strings, one, two, and three, you want to use these fingers. And you want to get underneath the string just a little bit and pull up. I'm exaggerating here so you can see what I'm doing, but that's the basic gist of it. You want to get underneath the string and pull up. For the first string, you're going to use your middle finger. Let's see if I can get a good camera shot there. For the first string, you always want to use your middle finger. Get under and pull up. And for the second and third string, use your index finger. Now, for the fourth, fifth, and sixth strings, those are the ones you're using your thumb on. So with your thumb, you're pushing down. these three strings you're pulling up, the top three strings you're pushing down. When you do that at the same time, you get this. A nice solid pluck. So, again, avoid going straight up and down like that. You want to go sideways. And make sure you're twisting to the right. And then of course, you want to do the two try your best to get the two strings at the same time to avoid that, you don't want that. You try your best to do them both at the same time and you get this. So that's plucking technique. Step three in your introduction to guitarron is the names of the strings and what notes they are. So it's important when you're playing guitarron to make sure that you're in tune. As with any stringed instrument, guitar, violin, or anything like that, you want to make sure that you're in tune. And the way we do that is with one of these electric tuners, or if you've got a mobile phone, you can use your cell phone for a tuner, because you can download a free app that way, or any a number of ways. But uh, it's important to make sure your strings are tuned correctly. So a guitarron has six strings. We address them from the top up. This is the first string, and it's A. The second string is E. You'll notice that this string is higher than that one, so it's not exactly like a guitar where every note gets uh, higher. This string is E. Third string is C. Your fourth string, that's the first steel one on most guitarrones, if you're using standard strings, that's G. Fifth string is D. D is in dog. And your last string is another A. So we have two A's and they're full octave apart. Once again, from top to bottom, first string is A, second string is E, third string is C, fourth string is G, fifth string is D, and the sixth string is A. So, for step four of our video, I'm going to show you some basic fretboard positions on a guitarron. So, something that you may have noticed by now is that the guitarron doesn't have any frets like a guitar. 
Uh, so we have to memorize our positions on the fretboard in order to correctly play our notes in tune. Now, there are four basic positions on a guitarron, and that's simple enough. And the way that I like to teach them is using one of these chromatic tuners. You can get one from uh, a company called Snark. They're usually about between 10 to $15. Or if you get a less expensive one, make sure that it has the ability to tune chromatically because uh, some less expensive tuners that are tuned for electric bass can't read all of the notes uh, that are presented on the guitarron because the frequencies are wrong. So, you know, to not get into too much mumbo jumbo, make sure that the tuner can tune chromatically. The reason I like to use these tuners is because it helps you to read the positions on your guitarron accurately. So, what I'm talking about. When we pluck the open strings for the note A, I think I showed you that in the last part of the video, that's open, that's an open position, meaning there's, I'm not fretting any notes here, I'm not pressing down on the string at all, that's just open. When we go to first position, or what I call first position, I'm going to press down on the string about an inch to an inch and a half away from the nut. So this is going to be position one. Now, position one is going to be a half step above the previous note. So if the open note is A, position one is going to be A sharp or B flat. And here's why I like to use an electric tuner because this can show me exactly where my position one is. So that's open. And I'm going to place my finger here and try to find an A sharp, which is right there. That's an A sharp. So you can see on the tuner there that it's marking A sharp. And that's going to be my position one. Imagine a fret on that part of the, the neck. This will be position one. So that's your A sharp note and B flat. Now, in order to do position two, we do the same thing. We just move it over about a half an inch. Boom. That'll be position two. So this is another half step up using these same two strings. It's going to be the note B. So let's try to find it on our tuner. I'm pretty close. I'm not quite there. Let's go up a little bit higher. I went too high now. That's a B. So position two is right there. So imagine a straight line across the neck. That's where our fret would be. This is position two. Position three, same uh, idea. We move it down a little bit. Position three should be another half step higher. And on this string, or rather these two strings, it'll be the note C. So we're trying to find C on the tuner. Oh, it looks like I landed right on it. That's pretty good. So that's position three right there. So we've got position one, position two, and position three. And the same concept for position four, we go down a little bit more. At this point, we're a little bit beyond the halfway mark of the neck. Position four, that should be a C sharp, another half step up, C sharp. So using your electronic tuner, you can judge based on the A string where your four positions are. Open string is A, position one will be A sharp, position two will be B, and position three will be C. Let's find it. Right there, that's position three. And position four will be C sharp. Find it. There we go. So, uh, in the same way that a lot of violin students will put pieces of tape to mark their positions, uh, I have directed some of my students to put tape on their positions. Uh, in my next video, where I show you guys the notes on the guitarron, I will be referring to these positions, positions 1, 2, 3, and 4, in order to teach you the notes. Uh, did you know that there are only 12 possible playing positions on a guitarron for your basic notes? That's, uh, it doesn't matter what octave we're playing in or anything like that. There's only 12 positions to learn, so it's a fairly simple task as far as learning your notes on a guitarron, but first you have to know your playing positions. So once again, position one is right about an inch away from the fretboard, from the nut rather. 
Position two is a little bit beyond that. Position three, a little beyond that. And position four, a little beyond that. So that's it for today's lesson, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that I was able to explain everything to you clearly. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, and I will do my very best to answer them in my next video. Make sure you watch my next video, because I'm going to be teaching you the 12 different positions that we need to learn to play all of the notes on a guitarron. If you liked the video, click like below. You can follow me here on YouTube by clicking the subscribe button. And you can follow me on Instagram as well by clicking, or by searching rather, for Mariachi Inglés. It's the same name as this channel. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you tell your friends if they're also trying to learn guitarron. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.